The brand new 2020 Ford Explorer has finally gone back to a rear-wheel drive based platform. The previous generation was essentially just a lifted Ford Taurus. This is the first time Ford has applied the ST badge to the Explorer. The previous generation had a Ford Explorer Sport, but at this point, Sport really doesn't mean anything. That one had a little bit bigger wheels, some fancy trim, and slightly more power, but really nothing to earn the Sport name. This though has ST on it, and that has to mean a little bit more. For the powertrain, it has a 3 liter twin turbo V6, making 400 horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque. That has made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission. As I said before, it is finally rear wheel drive based, but it has all wheel drive. 0 to 60 will happen in 5 seconds, which is pretty impressive for a 3 row SUV. On the outside, this new Explorer is completely brand new, and I think it looks really good. Because it's an ST, you get like the blacked out grill, obviously the ST badge, and you get these Explorer lettering on the hood itself. Top of the line lighting, LED everything, got a nice daytime running light on the very top here. As we go around to the side, so you get blacked out mirrors because it's an ST, but this specific ST did not option the fancier sport pack track pack, so it has the lower end wheels. You get bigger black wheels, it's got larger rotors, and then red calipers if you were to option that other package on it. Around the side, it's, it's similar dimensions to the previous one. Around back, they've also updated the lighting and the shape and everything. It has, this is going to be something I'm going to complain about. Because it is an ST and that's supposed to be sporty, it has quad exhaust tips. Until you look closely and you realize it may have four tips, but they're not real. The tips end out there, but the actual exhaust goes straight down and just channels right down. So it's not quite as bad as something like an Audi SQ5 where it was like plastic trim and the pipes exited before the bumper. It at least goes to the bumper, but actual tips aren't functional. Since this is a three row family SUV, despite the ST badge, we do have to talk about the practicality. You have the kick to open lift gate, simply kick your foot underneath there and the lift gate opens. Behind the third row of seats, there's actually slightly less cargo capacity compared to the previous generation. But when you start folding the seats down, with these one touch buttons, it's about the same. Underneath this load floor here, you actually have even more storage. Got a all weather mat back here. And then when you're done, kick your foot again and the lift gate closes. On the inside, this new Explorer is legitimately nice. It's a huge step up from the previous generation. So as an ST, um, it's got some sporty touches to it. You have an ST badge on the wheel itself. I gotta tell you guys, this steering wheel is really nice. It's very nicely padded, has some cross stitching on it, and it feels really nice to hold on to. The paddle shifters are right there. A lot of new tech too. Giant over 12 inch digital display screen here. It's configurable as you change between your drive modes. One thing with the new Explorer that had some controversy is the center screen here. This is a normal one because the owner of this car did not want the iPad Pro stuck onto his dashboard. The other option is a vertical aligned, very large touch screen. It looks really cool. Um, a lot of companies are going, are going to this kind of vertical screen. You've got Ram with a huge one. Tesla has been doing it. Volvo has a vertical screen. But those, some of them are a little more well integrated into the dash. I think my complaint with the Ford one is it just looks like an afterthought, like somebody just stuck giant screen onto it. It looks nice, has some cool features, but the execution wasn't quite perfect. This thing also has all of your latest technology and luxury features. We've got heated and cooled seats, heated steering wheel, you have lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, all your safety features, a ton of cup holders, USB charging ports everywhere. You can actually plug like a full laptop charger in to the back there. Other funny touches, you have um, hold, auto hold. So that's something that's been usually found in higher end cars, it's kind of trickling down. So you press the button, when you come to a stop, it'll hold the brakes for you. You don't need to hold onto the brakes and hit the gas and you start driving away. Rotary shifter, all the Fords are going to that now. So you can say you share your transmission shifter with a Ford GT supercar, but then the Ford GT also shares that with like a Ford Fusion. The inside of the Explorer is extremely spacious. I mean, these seats are really comfortable, a little more sporty. They've got this ST kind of embossed on the back of them. It is a three row SUV. So we've got two seats back there and then a the third row. I sat in the back earlier and it's plenty spacious and comfortable a lot of openness to it. You've got very good visibility, a giant panoramic sunroof. Overall, I think this has really jumped up from the previous generation is extremely competitive in the class in terms of technology, fit and finish, the features there, the luxury, and an ST model has some sportiness to it. When you first start the Explorer ST, get this cool ST graphic that pops up. 
eventually. There we go, ST. And then the graphics are really nice. I remember when Ford first came out with uh, My Ford Touch, it was abysmal, almost impossible to use. And then this is way better now, it's sync. We've got this camera system, once it loads, do 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 do. Okay, this might take a little bit. There we go. We've got the camera system. So you have a 360 overview of it, front rear cameras. You can see my R7 is parked over there. And then we can also go, if you see in the center cluster here, you can change through drive modes. We're just in regular normal now. And if you toggle through, let's see, we can go to, this is eco mode, all the graph, look at the graphics. They look really, really nice. I will say, and I was talking to the owner about that, it's a little bit laggy. He knows that like when he's just trying to go through a different mode, it'll take a little bit for it to react. So that's sport mode. It takes a little bit for it to load up. Sport mode is when you get your dual speedometer and tachometer. What else is there? I think we just go back into, well, that's sport again, tow haul, and then eco, and then there's a normal. We have a slippery, and then trail, and deep snow and sand. But they look really cool. Those graphics are pretty. A little bit slow in terms of reaction time and how quickly it refreshes. So how does the Explorer ST drive? Actually really well. So you heard that back there. It sounds pretty good. Now I know probably almost all of it is synthesized and fake and pumped through the speakers, but as part of the overall experience, the sound is good. I enjoy that. The steering wheel, it feels great. I love the size of it. Um, it's flat bottom ish sort of it's got some nice stitching the leather it feels great steering feedback is pretty good and then body control is actually decent uh, it doesn't have as much roll as i would have thought given a vehicle of this size so did a good job tuning it as an st so you can't expect this to be something like a focus rs or even in the suv world like a uh, x5m or a amg or a cayenne turbo because again those are well into the six figures this is something around fifty to sixty thousand dollars but after experiencing driving around i do think it earns the st badge now st doesn't mean purely track focus it's a sportier version that you can still drive daily and enjoy think about like the focus and fiesta st they're not hardcore like a focus rs they're some of the sporty stuff there but also still usable and as a luxury premium crossover suv it's very nice i mean wind noise is not horrible it rides pretty well this is probably better because it's on the smaller wheels not the giant 21s it feels well isolated again like we mentioned earlier all the tech and luxury features i'm in sport mode right now but i can hop back into whether if i'm in normal or actually i'll probably eco i don't want eco i want normal mode just cruising around the 10 speed automatic is a good transmission it'll give you quicker shifts and uh it'll help with fuel economy which is why they've gone to 10 speeds i don't love it as much i think in this application as some of the other ones probably due to tuning uh, the paddle shifter response doesn't blow me away like in a ford raptor the 10 speed's actually a pretty badass transmission driving this explorer st it's really cool as an st but also just as an overall platform that ford has gone to a rear wheel drive brand new from the ground up they did a great job i think it optimized a lot of stuff in the way it drives it handles packaging and it's all new generation and i think it is now class leading class competitive it is right up there it makes the previous one look extremely dated and feel extremely dated because it is in comparison cruising around driving it it is sporty enough where you can have some fun with it let's just say you had to get rid of your mustang or whatever because you have a family or something or you wanted something more practical but you didn't want to be bored with a little four cylinder hauling around five thousand pounds of metal the ST is a great combination. This motor is strong, 400 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque. You put your foot down, it downshifts, and it's not gonna throw you back like a 500 plus horsepower twin turbo V8, but it's strong. Overall, I believe the value of the new Explorer ST is extremely compelling because among the competitors, the only thing that can really come close to offering what this thing does is a Durango SRT. And that is a much older generation vehicle. So you do not have all the new tech and luxury features you would find in this. The other competitors like a Honda Pilot or whatever Toyota offers and things like that are not gonna come anywhere close to the performance. I am really interested to try out the new Hyundai Palisade and the Kia Telluride, because those look really cool and I've heard some good reviews about it. But I, I commend Ford for doing an excellent job with this. I think it does deserve an ST badge because it is legitimately fun to drive compared to everything else out there. Um, it's enjoyable, it has the luxury and tech features, it is spacious, three rows, all the convenient stuff. I could see this being a great family vehicle. 
And given that it's an ST, it's great that it exists, but it also says good things about the other lower non-performance trims. So if you're looking for a uh, family vehicle, the new Explorer definitely deserves a try, a test drive, everything, consider this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely check out the ownership perspective I filmed with my friend Justin, he owns this, and also the C7 Corvette that I filmed a long time ago. Make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, follow me on Instagram. Thanks for watching.